osteomyelitis evolves or how the pathogenesis of osteomyelitis happens. Now there is a bacterial infection and bacteria will proliferate mostly at the metaphysis. Okay? I will come to that later. So, bacteria proliferate at the metaphysis. Then what will happen? This inflammation will spread longitudinally. Now, if you can recall a bone that there is epiphysis, metaphysis and diaphysis. So, in the metaphysis region, there is this inflammation which is forming a small abscess. It can extend longitudinally up or down. Okay? Then this inflammation now becomes bigger and forms a subperiosteal abscess. Subperiosteal means there is a periosteum, I have already told you periosteum and endosteum. So, below the periosteum there will be an abscess. Once there is a periosteal abscess, what that will do? That will lift the periosteum and that will impair the blood supply to bony tissue. Okay? So, if I draw a diagram here, there is below the periosteum there is an abscess and periosteum is lifted. Now, once the periosteum is lifted, the blood supply that is coming from outside will be affected. So, the underlying bone will undergo necrosis because of lack of blood supply. Now, once there is necrosis, there is lack of blood supply, this rupture of periosteum will lead to a draining sinus or a tract or a sinus tract that we have already discussed. In addition to that, this necrotic and dead bone can be known as sequestrum and there can be newborn formation in chronic osteomyelitis that will be surrounding the sequestrum and that is called as involucrum. Okay? So, involucrum is the new bone that surrounds the dead bony sequestrum. Okay? So, that was the, the diagrammatic representation. Now, let us how it looks here. Okay? So, if you see here, this is the epiphysis and this is the metaphysis region. Okay? In the metaphysis, you can see the vessels are loopy or lot of capillary network will be there in the metaphysis region. So, what happens? The infection starts here. The microabscess forms, then the microabscess becomes a bigger abscess, and then you see the periosteum is still intact. Later, what will happen? This abscess will rupture, and there is elevation of periosteum. Here, periosteal elevation. Once periosteum is elevated, you will have dead bone that is sequestrum. Oh, because periosteal elevation will impair blood supply and so that will lead to necrosis of bone that is sequestrum. In the later stage, this sequest or this abscess will rupture to the skin to form a sinus tract. Okay? And then there is in the later part still new bone formation around the sequestrum that is called as involucrum. Okay? With both the diagrams, I hope you are understanding on how path the pathogenesis of osteomyelitis or how osteomyelitis evolves is very clear. Now, once there is chronic osteomyelitis, what will happen? There is osteoclastic bone resorption, ingrowth of fibrous tissue and deposition of new reactive bone at the periphery and this new bone is called as involucrum. Okay? Now, here there are different pictures. If you can see, this is the radiological picture where of chronic osteomyelitis, where the bone is irregular as well as it is like scallop, irregular very bone and that is called as dead bone. The corresponding bone, it is taken out, this is called as sequestrum. Okay? So, you can see this bone, when it is taken out, it will look like this, irregular and friable. This is another picture just to show you this is a dead bony fragment that is sequestrum whereas this is the radiology as well as graphical presentation. Here you can make out the sequestrum. So, this is the dead bone and surrounding the dead bone there is some new bone formation that is called as involucrum. Now, we have understood how the pathogenesis or how osteomyelitis happens, what are the organisms that cause osteomyelitis and what are the clinical features of it. Now, we will come to the complications of osteomyelitis. So, what are the complications that can happen? 
First and foremost is pathological fracture. Now because the periosteum is damaged, so the bone becomes weak and if that is a weight bearing bone like your femur or tibia, then it can easily undergo pathological fracture. Okay? The second is secondary amyloidosis. Now amyloidosis is a deposition of special type of protein, extracellular deposition of protein that will be discussed in subsequent chapter. But we know amyloidosis can be two types that is primary or secondary. Primary is mostly because of plasma cell dyscrasia, whereas secondary is because of chronic inflammation. Now the chronic inflammation can be chronic osteomyelitis or chronic granulomatous lesion like tuberculosis. So what we can find is secondary amyloidosis because of chronic osteomyelitis or tuberculosis. The third is endocarditis. Now endocarditis means inflammation of the valve or endocardium. Okay? So, because this osteomyelitis from the bone, it will go to the blood and circulate, so it can damage the valve and endocardium causing endocarditis. Fourth is sepsis. The patient can develop generalized or the infection can evolve from one organ and involve multiple organs and that is called as sepsis. The, the most important complication from the sinus tract is a squamous cell carcinoma. Okay? So, squamous cell carcinoma comes from the sinus tract whereas sarcoma develops in the infected bone. The bone will develop sarcoma, the sinus tract will develop squamous cell carcinoma. This you may get as an objective or MCQ. You have to remember this. These are the two malignancies that SCC and sarcoma that develop in relation to chronic osteomyelitis. Okay?